world of the actor. You can call me the director, doll. I often use this name. If you didn't know, I'm the one who directed the entire farce in Penacone. As the leading man of the show, what did you think? Well, actually, due to the current plot requirements, you're only allowed to say one line. So... <sighs> it's all my fault for being duped by the masked fools. The screenplay was written by someone named Miss Sparkles. She said she graduated from Sparkle University's film directing and screenwriting program, so we instantly hit it off. Who knew that there was no such thing as the film directing and screenwriting program at Sparkle University? In fact, Sparkle University, since you're done asking questions and I'm done answering, according to the script, I must reveal to you the fact that there's no bomb here. But don't fret, I've also prepared a gift for you. At least I made some progress. Gotta keep working at it. Hello, I'm a bomb. There's still some time before I explode, so you can take a look around first. We do not have this function called wait around, but it's no problem to ease any boredom during your wait. I can play a snap playing Never Give Up, Never Surrender by the trending superstar Ask Rickley from the Epsilon 12 system. Oh, hang on. Hanakoni's family have not purchased the rights to this song. We can't play it here. How about this? I'll recite it for you. Next up, please enjoy a recital of Never Give Up, Never Surrender. Oh, aha! If you ask me how I feel about you, don't tell me that you pretend not to see. They will never give you up, never make you sad. They will never give you up, never make you cry. They will never say goodbye to you, never tell lies to hurt you. Praise, aha! I weep for the department. It too shall fall.
Welcome to the radio. Thank you, mister. But Curta, to be frank, I care to experience it. Holy fudge, your the ritual is ready. Great gray haired little one, I'm the constable around these parts, and right now I'm posing as a bomb. I'm about to explode in the. Alright, now that you've found me, it's my turn. Five, four, one! Is it really that important? But was it surprising? Shocking? Not much time left. I hope I... Is that... Firefly? 28 minutes, 46 seconds. 28 minutes, 45 seconds. Uh, you're here! Don't come close! This bomb is very dangerous. And... I'm the real Firefly! Since you're here, I'll just keep it short. Just over half an hour ago, I received a message from an unknown sender and rushed here as soon as I could. 27 minutes, 52 seconds. 27 minutes, 51. The sweet dream has lost the protection of the Order. If it were to blow up here, the consequences would be unfathomable. Apart from its creator, I fear no one knows how to deal. Difficult. Time is running out, and she's a mass. Hmm. Actually, do you still remember? The script said that I will experience death three times in the land of dreams. I think this moment heralds the third time. You may already know that I have no way of evoking dreams. I employ a Stellaron Hunter's special method in order to enter dreams instead. This allows me, as long as I can bear the pain of the Memoria pressure, I'll be able to dive into the primal memory zone beyond the dream and extend a lifeline to the Radiant Felt. I will take this bomb into the depths of the dreamscape, as deep as possible where there are no living souls around. That way, at least no one will get hurt. Don't worry. 
I believe that this Firefly armor will be enough to take me to where I need to go before the countdown ends. And maybe even make it back safely. At present, this is our best and most logical course of action. After all, a long story deserves a happy ending. I have some words to share with you. Though they were spoken to me by Miss Acheron. She said that... The so-called impossible is merely something that is yet to happen. At the moment, there are so many things that seem impossible. But are they really never going to happen? Maybe it's just that the moment to disprove these impossibilities hasn't arrived yet. Whether it be a literal ending, suffering akin to death, or a harrowing deathscape. Before the appointed destination arrives, they are all the same. Yet I can still make myriad choices. I also firmly believe that, that when that moment arrives for us to make a choice, the answer to our end will already be within our hearts. It is not destiny that shapes us, but we who shape destiny. The Astral Express and the Stellaron Hunters are like light and shadow. We walk on different paths, intertwined, moving forward and growing together. Maybe the end is predestined, but it is not today. Human life is short, just like fireflies to a flame. So if you have an answer in your heart, always remember, don't leave with any regrets. We have this right. about other people's safety. Why don't you go take a closer look? <laughs> reality. It was an answer we longed for, day and night. So, why do people choose to slumber? I think it's as you said. Because in the end, we will wake up from our dreams. I happened to see a child holding it. He said the flowers were prepared by Aunt Jessie. For the watchmaker, Mikhail would place two bunches of flowers here year after year. And after he left, it became three. Your wishes will always be remembered by someone. Now, Panacone, as you hoped, has welcomed the dawn after a long, dark night. The path forward may not be a bed of roses, but at least people are prepared to step forth toward... Tiernan, you can go home now. Well, the Nameless are also preparing for the next stop of their voyage. But before leaving, we still have one last thing to do. It is my honor. I've said many goodbyes. Yet, I am glad that this is the first time I speak these words with a smile. But before leaving, 
I'm sure you all have plenty to say to the Nameless of the Past. A fitting end to the tale of the Departed. One could not ask for a better farewell. Go on. They're all here. Honestly, when I heard the Conductor's request, I was pretty surprised the Nameless. Those who trailblaze, doing good deeds but never seeking recognition. After all this time, but it seems... In the land of the dreams, anything is indeed... History may not remember the names of the dead. But the stars will attest to their jet. The first glimmer of light in the prolonged night often illuminates little. As it is fleeting in the darkness too vast. But because of this, people will remember... As long as something shines in the night sky, then when the first star falls, countless more will fall. Brooklyn Tiernan, Rosalina J. and Estella, we raise a toast to you, trailblazers of the Silver Rail. A toast to history that no longer remains silent. The passionate and courageous pursuit and avoid. Statue. It wasn't here last time. Looks like this is the last riddle that Mr. Gallagher left for. In the end, we still failed to figure out his true identity, or if he was even a living person. Uh, what should I say? I mean, this guy is definitely a history fictionologist, all right. I'm suddenly reminded of the time at the theme park when he said he was only 13 years old. Could either way, he's an. And at least our journey together in Panacone was real enough. Gallagher, we raise a toast to you. The slumber to the festival's invitation. To all lies and the singular truth. If we ever meet again, please don't talk in riddles. Is the Astro Express ready to depart Penacone? Uh, apologies, Mr. Mika, that we are only now bidding you farewell. Oh, that's all right. You've all done so much for the Watchmaker, and we are forever indebted. Allow me, as the representative of Dreamflux Reef, to make another toast to- What will the people of Dreamflux Reef do now? Many will continue to live here. Those accustomed to being awake will mostly have a hard time getting used to a life of darkness with their eyes closed. Though the order has faded, there are uh, Panacone's nights are long, and there are <laughs> We're still managing. Mika and residents of Dreamflux Reef, we raise a toast to you. Walk to your tenacity throughout time, to each sorrowful night, and... <laughs> In the end, we still came full circle. This trailblazing expedition started from the moment you and a bellboy ran into each other. After going on a journey of many twists and turns, they still ended up where they started, just like a clock's hands that turn round and round. The start and end of each day, there shouldn't be much left to say. This entire adventure started because of you, and should naturally end with you. And then, a new page will be turned. Mikhail Char Legwork, we raise a toast to you. Watchmaker of the Land of the Dreams, nameless of the Astral Express, to Penacone's past, present, future, and the child's unwavering dream unto death. With that, our duty as nameless should be complete, right? The trailblaze can illuminate the way, but ultimately, the future of a world belongs to those who live it. Uh, I still feel that Mr. McHale must have really wanted to witness this day himself. What's on your mind, March? Just a strange feeling. 
I had it a few stops ago, but it's super strong this time. Why not talk about it? Maybe everyone's thinking the same thing. I can't help but think that whether it's Mr. Mikhail, Mr. T... They were also young ones. Stumbling and bumbling around just like us. Getting into scraps and mischief. That sort of... But those things... are all in the past. I know. But the thing that... It'll be easier to understand if I use an analogy. Like, when you're reading a book. If one of its characters keeps running into obstacles and experiences an ending full of regrets. We're bound to feel a bit mixed about it, right? To me, it's because we've seen every nook and cranny of their lives. We see these people as... So... Even if there are parts of it that aren't really realistic, nor logical, we still hope that their story gets a good ending when it... But... what if they... When Mr. Mikhail sat in this chair, waiting for the Astral Express to arrive every day, what was he thinking? And if, at the end of his life, he could still firmly say he had... Then... what is this regret we... Mm. I think each and every one of us is searching for the answer to this the universe is vast, and our lives are but specks. The trailblaze never ends, but against the backdrop of the cosmos, the average person's lifelong journey is, but it is in this minuscule distance that paths cross, and countless worlds connect. The universe may not remember every person who leaves a tie along the silver rail, but we will. As long as we remember, their stories will never... And what Mr. Mikhail has left for us is his answer to this very question. It may not be perfect, but it left a smile on this storied, jaded old Nameless's face and its meaning will be interpreted by those who come after. It's not the answer that's important. This is what trailblazing is. Uh, sure. Uh, I'm really sorry for bringing down the vibe. Quick, Don Hung, tell us a dad joke to lighten the mood. <laughs> it's never a bad thing to reflect. One day we'll all have to face our own farewell. <laughs> but before that, we still have a long way ahead of us. So the most important thing right now is to tell the conductor what we saw in Penacony. Then, prepare ourselves for our next trailblazing destination. I should get back to the Express. Or, maybe I could say my final goodbye to Acheron. Do you still remember when we first arrived in Penacony? Who would have thought our paths would cross in such a way? Ah. In that case, I must apologize for my rudeness. Do you remember when we first met? Because of the Self-Annihilator's curse, my memories are stripped away, blurring my past. And after our journey, That's right. What matters more is not who I am, but what we have done together. The ocean of stars is vast, and given our destinations, I'm afraid our paths may not But the trailblazing expedition ahead is always full of unknowns, and my blade is sharp enough to sever fate. As long 
Come to think of it, I didn't even get a chance to formally introduce myself. Simply put, I'm a self-annihilator who was cursed by the Nihility. My hometown was destroyed a long time ago, and the whole world was erased beneath their shadow. In order to fight against the cruel end of self-destruction, I went on a journey in search of a way to sever the chains of the Nihility. After a long and grueling search, I am convinced that my destination lies within the depths of the Dark Web, where reality and the Nihility... In there lurks a secret called Device Nine. One day, we both still have our own paths to walk. So let's forge ahead. Hopefully, if we meet again, it'll be beneath clear skies. Your method of consolation is truly unsophisticated. Still better than just standing there like a scarecrow. Oh, hey, you're finally back. We told Pom Pom all about our adventure, and they suddenly started crying. I've never seen Pom Pom so sad before. <laughs> the conductor never cries. Pom Pom is just, just angry. Yeah, angry! No matter where the express stops, you lot always manage to cause chaos! My well-thought-out timetable completely ignored! If you carry on like this, the express is gonna run out of fuel! That's right! Pop-Pop is just... <laughs> it's okay. Oh, everyone, could you all take a break in the next car? Don't worry. I'll stay here with Pom. But... Let's go, March. It's okay. Oh. I never expected Pom Pom would be so distraught. Those three nameless must have meant a lot to Pom. -Pom. No one knows exactly when Pom Pom boarded the express, but. One can surmise that their journey has been filled with many hellos and goodbyes. Probably more than we can imagine. The fact that they're crying so hard is probably a good sign. It proves that Pom Pom's emotions haven't become dulled by the grind of time. They still deeply cherish every nameless who has boarded the Express and value every journey. Leave it to Himiko. When it comes to comforting, there's no one better on the... <laughs> well, they were a little emotional at the time, but... Um, since you joined us, the Express has stayed longer than anticipated at every stop along the way. And to ensure that everyone always makes it back on board, Pom Pom has had no choice but to delay the warp jump schedule. I see. <laughs> no wonder I can regularly hear Pom Pom pacing anxiously up and down the court. Turns out, Pom Pom's been silently putting in a lot. Different from typical vehicles, the Astral Express converts every trailblaze into the energy it needs to run. Ideally, as long as trailblazing expeditions continue without interruption, the Express will receive a constant flow of but. Because of our previous encounters, fuel is being used up much faster than expected. We can probably only pull off two more only two more isn't that super risky oh, i don't want to become an ice cube floating around in space well, how about we shove you back in the space station's computer then which also means that we must prudently consider our next destination yes uh, i've already checked the astral charts the two nearest worlds to us are the oceanic planet of Lushaka and the agate world Melustanen. As for which one we're headed to, that still requires... Or perhaps you might consider a suggestion. Everyone, we meet again. It's you! 
Why were you just in my room? Hmm. It's a very cute room, Miss March. Just like you. Memo Keeper, let's put aside how you managed to sneak past everyone and board the Express for now. I accidentally overheard how the Express obtains fuel. I just wanted to chat with everyone to see if we could work together. But now, it appears my suggestion could be the very lifeline. Please speak candidly. Depending on what you say, we could very well ask you to disembark. Ah. The Permanence's descendant. What a charming little dragon. Especially with those mired memories of your... But I digress. If the Astral Express is in urgent need of a special trailblazing expedition to recharge its engine... Have you all considered this? Perhaps your destination could be a world that even the renowned Aki Vili never reached. Should you be able to lay down a new stretch of silver rail, the Express may never have to worry about energy ever again. A trailblazing to a world that even Aki Vili has never been to? Is that possible? Continue, Memo Keeper. This destination of which you speak, what sort of world is it? A world that many across the universe don't even know exists. A world hidden away from outside observation. Its presence only revealed by the light from the mirror of the Garden of Recollection. A world fettered by three paths. Its destiny hanging in the balance. The Eternal Land. Amphorius. I hope I'm not too late, child. I wasn't expecting it to be you. Don't you know how many sentry posts the family has built? And how hard it is to get you out of here? <laughs> Looks like my time's up. What do you mean? What time? Negotiation, interrogation, or death. The dance is done. Why bother with the compassionate pretense? and give someone who's about to die the chance to talk. Despite your fall from grace, you still look well. <sighs> Do not insult my pride with half-veiled sarcasm. Oh, of course not. I merely came to fulfill your younger sister's wishes. Robin? To build a true haven where everyone can attain peace. That's the oath between you siblings. Is if I told you, there was still a chance to realize this vow. Would you be willing to talk to me then? <laughs> <laughs> I recognize the gravity of this question, which is why you don't have to answer me right now. Go now. You are free, O oh Chosen One, who dared to exceed his bounds. Sever your wings, descend to the mortal realm, and walk their lands. See what this world is truly like. <sighs> I will not accept your ch- As I mentioned earlier, it's a trade, and you don't have to give me an answer right now. Ah, a word of advice for you before we part ways. A word of warning from someone who's been in your shoes before. Life is too short to miss out on golden opportunities. Thank you. 